Hey, I'm TC, and I'm making a 2D platformer called Watch Your Jump, with the unique twist that you have a limited amount of jumps to complete each room. And on this episode, we're making levels. Let's get started. If you remember from last video, there's a thing we need to do first, and that's make a Trello board and plan everything out. So these are the things I want to do today. Respawn points, power-ups, a fan, and levels. But enough talking, let's get moving. First on the list, the fan. No, no, not that type. This type of fan. I started by opening up a sprite and importing the base wall tile and then drawing on top of it. My inspiration came from these giant air conditioning units you can see on the top of skyscrapers, and I think it came out really well. Next was animation, which took forever, but I think it's really convincing that there's a blade spinning under that when it's just a line that grows and shrinks periodically. After that, I went into Unity to add the functionality. How it works is I place an invisible trigger above the fan, and when entered, will apply a force in the desired direction and push them accordingly. This mechanic leads to some very interesting level design, which you'll see later, and at some point I want to add some particle to the direction that the fan is pushing the air in. But enough of that, because next on the list is respawn points. Now, the reason why I want to add in respawn points to the game is because currently, if you were to die in the very last room of the game, you'd be sent right back to the beginning of the game. And I know that if this was to happen to me, I wouldn't be too thrilled, and I don't want this happening. So whenever you see one of these around, I recommend running into it, because it will now set your respawn point there, so you don't have to restart the entire game when you die to a spike. Now, I'm still not 100% happy with how the system works, and there are certainly some bugs in there, so I do expect to revisit it later down the line, but I do think it's a solid start. But enough of this, now it's time for power-ups. Now, power-ups can be found in all sorts of games, from Mario in the form of these magical mushrooms, in Pac-Man from these large glowing ball thingies, and now in my game in the form of this temporary circle with a plus in it. How they work is that if you run into them, the jump counter will be set to max. This will be useful in longer rooms when you may be running long jumps. And on that note, the moment you've all been waiting for. Levels. I already have made many, many levels from before restarting the game, but unfortunately I was unable to reuse any of these due to how they were made. You see, in Prototype 2, your objective was to bounce around a laser beam between mirrors to complete each room. In this game, it's all about safely making it to the other side of the room. So with that in mind, it was on to making new levels. Cue the montage! What? What? What do you mean there's no montage? Forgot to press record? What? <clears throat> Dearest viewer, I regret to inform you that there will be no montage due to the forgetful nature of past me to press the record button to demonstrate the capabilities of my amazing ability to construct levels. <clears throat> but anyway, now we have levels. And they are <gasps> Starting room, multi-direction room, wall jumping room, double jumping room, fan introduction room, long room, horizontal fan room, annoying spike room, easy spike room, tall room, and exit room. Phew. All of these rooms make up world one in Watch or Jump. What to world I hear you ask? Well, dear viewer, that's a good question. Think of them as levels with new art and mechanics, like a Mario, where you start in the overworld and then go to the underground. Similar concept, there are still a few more rooms that I haven't shown you because I don't want to ruin the entire game, but that's a good taste of some of the ones in there. And so that's levels. But wait, there's one more thing I want to show you before you depart, the dialogue system. Now, you may be wondering, TC. Why do I need a dialogue system? Well, my response to that would be, I don't. But I want one. So here it is. Originally, I used one made by Brackies, but I later moved to a different one by a channel called P P P P P P Pandemonium. I went for this one because it offers a large amount of customization with each dialogue line. Like, look at this! I can customize the speed of the text, the pause between the sentences, the color of the font of the text, the position and sprite of each character picture, and so much more! With all of this set up, I decided to create a small cutscene with Tillybot, who you will find out more about next video. And speaking of next video, my time is up. I really hope you all enjoyed watching, and subscribe to not miss my next video, where we will be revamping the art for the entire game. I'm really looking forward to it. Anyway, see you next time! Thank you.